So once you know what you're going to do, or what your structure is going to be, and say I want to be an importer and distributor because I really love those Italian products that I tried in Italy. So now, how much money do I really need to fund this company? Well, I think it's really best to do your due diligence and figure that out. Now, if I'm starting just an import company, well, my cash needs may not be as significant as if I'm looking also to be a wholesaler. If I'm going to be a wholesaler of products, I may need to go out there and get a sales team together. I may need to have vehicles or trucking so I can get the products to where they need to go. I may need a warehouse. And if I need warehouse space in addition to my lease, again, these are other expenses that I may not have accounted for. So when you're trying to figure out what you actually need, you're not just looking at the initial startup cost of the venture. You're going to look to the future and see, okay, how long can I keep this running before I start turning a profit? Because as we know, most startups don't start generating profits immediately. So once you figure out how much you need to invest in your new company, where are these funds coming from? Well, some people may start out small, and they may have their own personal fund set aside, and they're going to invest that into this venture. Others may look to others to get some financial help. So maybe there's a gift involved, that someone gives you some money to help you start up your organization. You may go the conventional route and get a loan. You go to the bank, you tell them what you're looking to do, that you're starting a new business, and take out a conventional loan. Uh, another option is that you may look for investors. So if I'm looking with my small company that I want to bring in investors, it could be friends and family, it could be other acquaintances that have, they meet certain thresholds to be an investor in my company, then what I would do is issue a private placement memo and give them a subscription agreement so they know that they're purchasing X number shares if it's a corporation or units if it's a limited liability company and what the fee is going to be per unit. So this way, again, everything you want to have documented, it's not gonna be based on a handshake. And there's actually a reason for this. Because when you're going to go apply for your permits, you need to be able to show where the source of funds are coming from. So if I just go and say, I'm gonna start up this business and I have a sack full of money and say, hey, great, I have $100,000 to start my business, well, that's fine because I have the wherewithal to do it because now I have money. However, when they're looking for my permit at my permit application, I have to show where the source of funds are coming from. So if it's personal funds, that's generally easy, right? You have a bank account, you show them your bank account, a withdrawal of $10,000, and it's going to be transferred into the new business account. If it's a gift, well, generally what they'll want to see is a gift letter. So if I give somebody $10,000 to start their business, I would write a letter saying, yes, I issued this $10,000 to so-and-so for this amount. Now, a loan obviously is much easier. You go, it's a commercial loan. We know when you sign a loan, you're signing your life away. There are lots and lots and lots of documents. And you would be able to show where that source of funds, where the source of funds are coming from. And then lastly, with equity investors, again, if you have a subscription agreement, then you're able to show the documentation. I had 10 investors invest in my company. They purchased X number of shares or units. This is what they paid for it. And so now the picture is rounded out where the funds are coming from. And then the last thing I think to consider when you're looking at who may be investing in your company or who may become part, uh, part of your ownership is tied as considerations. So we were talking about the three-tier system and you have your importers, your wholesalers, and your retailers. So if there's a retailer that wants to invest or be an owner in your company, that's gonna be problematic because you can't have a retail license and either an importation or wholesaler license. So when you're screening people or looking for them to become part of the organization, you may just wanna double check and see if they have any interest. Because normally what they'll do when they're scanning um, as to who owns a company, if you have 10 or less shareholders or members, then they're gonna to wanna to look at or have personal questionnaires from all those individuals. If you have more than um, 10 shareholders or members, well then they're gonna look at people that hold over 10% of the holdings. So again, so to avoid any hiccups with your application, it's something that you wanna screen for in advance.